Hi everyone, I'm Sam, the tutoring coordinator with the Learning Center. Hello, I'm Gregory. I'm the office assistant at the Learning Center. And uh, Gregory, you had a question about something. Yeah, my uh, my professor was uh, using the polling feature, uh, and I was not able to make that work for myself. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could show me, give me a little, give me some tips. On sure. How to do. Uh, what about the polling feature wasn't working for you? I can't find it. Okay. And it seems confusing. Sure. Oh. Um, the polling feature you'd only see as a host. Okay. And on the bottom of my toolbar, it's three little lines that says polls. Now, polls are really only useful if you want you, the question to be anonymous and if you want to display the results to everyone in the end. If that's not necessary, then I would actually recommend just asking the whole group, your study group or whoever, uh, a question, usually a yes or no question or requires a thumbs up or thumbs down. But just to show you, so to actually use the polling function, you would click on these three bars down at the bottom as a host, okay. and then it asks you to add a question, and then it redirects you to Zoom, and then you fill out your question here, and then you save it, and then when you go back into Zoom, then the poll will actually be available, and then I can launch the poll. And now you, Gregory, should be able to see it. Right on. The, I sure can. The choices are pretty difficult to make. And then you end the poll, and then this is where you can share it with everyone. And that's pretty much polls. So a simpler way to do that is just uh, asking, um, uh, do you like the color blue, Gregory? I do like the color blue. You're right, Sam. I may end up um, asking my peers questions directly rather than using this feature. Down in the bottom right hand corner you have your nonverbal feedback. So I like blue so I'm going to say check mark. Is that under the participants window? Yes, it's under the participants Great. panel. Thank and uh, it's usually above the chat panel. If I expand the chat, the participants is always above there. Also is under more, you can have other indications. Like if you really like something, you can clap or thumbs down and thumbs up. And that's a more straightforward and fluid way of getting reactions from people without necessarily doing a poll, which can be more time consuming. What else did you want to talk about, Gregory? How do I, uh, how do I source my chat logs? Right. Yeah, that's an important bit of information because oftentimes uh, crucial things might be shared in chat that you have the intention of sharing later on. You can um, either copy things directly and paste it, or you can save the whole chat by clicking save chat and it doesn't open up a window it just merely says this green bar say chat saved and if you click show in folder this is where they live now if you forget where that is uh, it will usually on a windows computer at least it will be in your documents and then under the zoom folder that's automatically created and then another option is you can uh, automatically save your chat. So if you know that for all time, you'll always want to be ref able to refer back to your chats, you can go into your Zoom settings. So if I go to my Zoom homepage and sign in, in my profile, sorry, settings, let me do a control F and search for a chat. Aha. Uh -huh. Right here, auto saving chats, automatically save all in meeting chats. So I have this turned on. So that means when I close out this Zoom window, okay, uh, I'm going to leave Gregory just so I can demonstrate this. Bye bye. Right. Leave meeting. The save chat should show up in the same uh, folder directory. If I open it back up, you can see my post here. Now I'm going to join Gregory back in the room. All right, so that wraps it up for uh, this Zoom training session. But uh, it's good to see you all. I'm Sam again from the Learning Center. I'm Gregory. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Sam.